So welcome to another episode of Strategy Sunday. We got a pretty great episode coming up. We got a lot of things we want to talk about, a lot of things that's going to happen over the next week that could affect both stocks and crypto. And we're also going to discuss some of the things that are going to happen maybe in the government, maybe a rate, uh, a rate increase that could affect financials and also investments. So I hope you guys are ready. Let's get started, right? So there's a big week coming up on Wall Street, right? Is that we got a lot of big tech companies that have their earnings calls coming up over the next week. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to show us has this AI movement, AI trend has actually been working because a lot of people have doubts that if the AI movement that's been happening over the last first half of this year is actually increasing the bottom line of a lot of these companies like Microsoft, NVIDIA and other companies that are either benefiting from or applying AI to increase revenue and profit, right? So there's been a lot of layoffs. A lot of people attribute those layoffs over the last few months with companies in, you know, uh, implement AI in their operations. So this is, <clears throat> sorry, this is going to show us if this actually worked or we got to go back to regular people, uh, human labor instead of AI, right? So we, like I said, we got a busy week in the Wall Street ahead of us. We got 150 S&P 500 companies that have to report their quarterly earnings, right? This includes Microsoft. This includes Meta, one of my favorite companies going forward, and also Google or Alphabet now as it's called, right? Also this week, they expect the, the uh, Fed to uh, rake the height another quarter percent, which is going to put a little bit of a strain on real estate uh, going forward. The rates are already high. You know, the, uh, the market it is slowing down. That's the whole point of continuing raising those rates is to get the real estate market and also the overall economy to slow down a little bit uh, and, and stop the onslaught of a of a recession or either slow it down. So a lot of people expect that to happen. So it's probably going to happen Wednesday. Uh, that's when they uh, that's when they have to announce it. They're probably going to announce a quarter point raise. Uh, so it's going to affect, like I said, real estate prices and a lot of other Anywhere that you loan money or borrow money is going to affect those markets, right? Tech giants like Microsoft and uh, Alphabet have to release their reports this week, their earnings reports. So we're going to see and get updates on artificial intelligence and see if that actually affected the bottom line like we thought, right? So one of the biggest companies I think is going to shock some people. I don't think they got earnings coming up. Microsoft, right? And it's one of my favorite companies going forward, especially in the AI arena. Microsoft has earnings, uh, I think either Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I'm pretty positive and I'm not going to go all out on a limb like I did with Tesla. I think they're either going to, they're going to exceed expectations right now. I can see Microsoft in the short term right now, Microsoft's trading at 320, 325. I can see it going over 400 before, you know, say before like October or let's say before Halloween. I think that it has the potential. I think that when these earnings come out this week, Microsoft is going to shock a lot of people. I don't think it's going to be a big shock like like Tesla back in January, February. I don't think that. But I think they are going to exceed, ex exceed expectations. And I can see Microsoft moving from like 320 where it's at now to 400 here in the near future. Right? So one of the biggest things is like, I don't know, we've been talking about how Amazon's biggest business, uh, growing business right now is not their service, right? Which is the Amazon website where you buy products and services now even. It's the biggest growing sector of their industry or their their, their business is AWS and that's cloud-based services, right? So Microsoft also has a, a, a you know, has, has cloud-based services called Azure, A-Z-U-R-E. And that's also one of its biggest growing uh, segments in this business. So that's going to be one thing we're going to be looking at in this earnings call is that what, what is Azure pulling in? What kind of money is Azure pulling in? Uh, and if that is how this is affecting the bottom line if, and if they plan to expand uh, that going forward. So like I said, I think um, Microsoft will probably exceed expectations. Not a lot, but slightly. Uh, it's going to cause the price to go up a little bit. And I think it'll be a slow grind up to around 400 uh, over the next two, three months. Uh, and like I said, is I, I really believe in Microsoft going forward. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about, now we're going to keep this short, uh, this strategy Sunday to be a few minutes, you know, 20 minutes or so. 
Uh, but like I said, if you guys are in the CNC, uh, we've had a great week in the CNC last week. The CNC is our community where we uh, we have stock signals, we have classes, we have events, we have a lot of great things, a, a great community to bring people in. It's, it's not just trading stocks, it's not just trading crypto, it's not just long-term investment, it's not just, uh, we talk a little bit about real estate, we bring experts in, we have After Strategy Sunday, we do what's called an after party where we break down these specific plays, we give out free reports, we do a lot of great things. The price, I believe, is $78 and it's going to go up to 80 something next week, so lock in that price this week. Uh, you can go to join the CNC or you could put you could send the word CNC to 89603 and you'll uh, get a link to sign up for the CNC. So the next few things I want to talk about is this XRP ruling, right? Well, over the last two weeks, XRP's went up over 100 percent I've been predicting it for over, you know, almost a year, over two, almost two years now that the SEC really didn't have a lawsuit against XRP because it really technically is not a security. Uh, and uh, that, like I said, is that the government had to find somebody to pick on. They picked XRP because of its corporate structure and the way things work. They were an easy target. So what happened is that they're losing a the lawsuit, right? Is that the uh, court, uh, the federal court judge, they said in most cases, which when they, you know, most cases, uh, XRP was not a security, right? So that leaves the SEC twiddling their thumbs. Yeah, they can't, what are they going to do now? The SEC, the first letter, is Securities and Exchange Commission. If that's not a security, they have no jurisdiction over XRP whatsoever. But the S, like all government organizations, the SEC does not like to lose. The government has a 96, I believe, 96% conviction and win rate in criminal and civil cases. They don't like to lose. They like spoiled babies. So now there's a lot of talk and the SEC has slightly threatened that they may do an appeal. So what this what happened with XRP is it caused the price to slow down. It was on its way to a dollar, two dollars, but now people are afraid that this SEC lawsuit can draw this thing out a little bit more, right? And like I said, is I don't believe it's a big threat of that because even if it happens, I believe it takes two years for the ruling to come through, and because in in the current ruling stands, right? That's what people don't understand is that they said S XRP in most cases was not a security. So they can appeal it all they want. For the next two years, they have to abide by what it is today. So for two years, uh, even if they, let's say the appeal works, whatever, all this time, S XRP has the time to grow. They have the time to build up relationships. They have the time to do a lot of things. They're going to benefit from the next Bitcoin halving, which is taking place next year, March, April of next year. So it doesn't really hurt our timeline on XRP or even our overall crypto market, but it does introduce risk and doubt. And whenever you do that, especially with a lot of unsavvy investors that we tend to have in the crypto industry, it's in a lot of new investors, a lot of institutional investors too. They're very uh, risk averse. So anytime there's something like that, they get out. So I still think over the long term, you know, say a year or so, I think by I think I still think by the Bitcoin having of 24 as April, March of April of the next year, I think we'll see XRP regardless of whatever the SEC does at two or three dollars. And I still see it at 20, 30, 40 dollars sometime late 24, early 25. So like I always say is XRP is probably the last big risk, low risk play that really will ever, ever exist in crypto. And people are going to come at me and they're going to say, it's always opportunities in crypto, and they're 100% right. But with the risk as low as XRP, like I said before, XRP was almost a guaranteed play. It was like 90%, right? Because the SEC really didn't have a case. But because the federal government has so much power, so much authority, so much, uh, so much influence, it was very, you know, they, they were able to keep the lawsuit going all this time, even though they really didn't have a case. So I think even now, uh, XRP sits at around 74, 75 cents. It's a great buy. Like I, can't, like I said, I can't tell you what to buy and sell. I can't do that. I'm not a financial advisor. But if I was going to buy XRP right now, I'd still be buying right now. Now, I've bought all mine when it was a lot lower price, and I may continue to buy. But if I was getting into it now, I would still see it as a great opportunity. So... Over since this ruling, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptocurrencies have actually saw gained a lot of attention, which is good for the market, right? But there's still fears because of this SEC case, and then the SEC tried to go after Coinbase stuff, and people are terrified 
of a crypto crackdown, right? So until the, ha I really don't think that we'll see a lot of movement in crypto until the halving happens. Uh, I think there'll be rumors of it going up and it'll go up a little bit, come back down. It'll be a slow grind to 40, you know, let's say Bitcoin, 40, 50,000 around the halving, which is next year, March, of, March and April of 24. But I don't think we're going to see real movement, real action until that having takes place. And that's just what I believe because I've been through this two times, three times before. This is the fourth time. And it, it's always like that. Everybody talks. It, this gonna, it never, nothing ever moves the needle except that Bitcoin having. So until that happens, I, I just don't think we're going to see any exponential grain, gains in almost any crypto. Uh, exponential, I mean, 10 times, five, you know, even XRP, let's say it goes up to $3. That, I mean, it's still up six times, which is still technically kind of exponential, but uh, but I'm not saying it's not going to be any huge gains until the having a next year. And that's what we're going to start seeing. And we're talking about delay after that is like four to six months. So we won't even see much price action to the middle of next year, late, uh, maybe August, you know, August, July of next year. We'll start seeing that price, you know, those quick gains that we usually see. Uh, once the having is uh, taking effect. So like I said, is that I think that um, I think we're just in a slow grind into now. So another thing I want to talk about is that since this XRP lawsuit uh, news has come out, that XRP is not a security in most cases. Uh, one thing I like to follow when I do a lot of trading, whether it's stocks or crypto or whatever, is I like to follow the big money. And if you follow the blood and think a thing about crypto is that we can always see what's happening on the blockchain. We know what wallets are accumulating, what wallets are dumping coins. It's a great indicator of what's coming next. And what's happening in XRP right now is that some of the biggest XRP wallets on the planet are not selling XRP, they're accumulating, right? And this is what I try to teach for the last three or four, four, four years I've been doing this on, on, on social media is that uh, the rich, the elite, and the wealthy, they're always ahead of the masses. So a lot of times you can, don't listen to what they say, watch what they do. And a lot of times when you watch what they do, you can see things that are, see trends and, and other things that are forming before it even takes place because they have access to information that we don't have, at least, you know, us general people don't have. So they get it before us and it takes a delay before, you know, the, it, it depends, it's almost like based on, uh, Net worth really is how the information flows from the top to the bottom. And that's just the way the world works. You know, it's not it's not bad or good. It's just how it works. Right. The banks, the, the whatever the banks and all these people get the information first and they call their, their best clients, which are the rich people. And they tell them so it, it takes a while for it to get to, you know, the poor people or the middle class. That's how things work. That's why it's important to create circles of winners. That's why it's important to get the right people around you. That's why it's important to tap in to podcast and, and YouTube videos like this is because you get access to things that maybe you wouldn't have known before. And then you're able to pass that on to people in your circle. So I want to talk a little bit about, you said XRP, uh, what could happen next uh, and what the next price could look like, right? So like we go back to those like wallets is that the biggest wallets are accumulating. Uh, the top 100 wallets have actually been going up in their accumulation of XRP over the last three months. That's always a good sign because that's, that tells us that they believe that the price or that the future price is going to be worth more than what they're holding now. That's the only reason why they're holding it, right? So uh, like I said, the wallets holding more than 100 million tokens have reached their highest count since the last like six months. Uh and a lot of lawyers are saying that even if, like we said, even if the SEC does uh, appeal, it really won't hurt because the current judgment stands until that next judgment happens. So, uh, but it is a lot of fear in the marketplace. A lot of people are scared. So that's going to always affect the price. So I want to talk about, last thing I want to talk about is AI stocks, right? Uh, so we've made a lot of money on AI stocks over the last six months. A lot of people have because AI has been hot and making uh, a lot of movements in both the real world and also the stock world. So I want to talk about two, you know, we talked about Meta. I still believe Meta is, is going to go up, you know, 200, 300% over the next few years. I still think Tesla is going to 1,000. I still think NVIDIA can go to 1,000 over this next year, next year and a half, all three of those. But there's a couple out there that I think are still have potential and a lot of people don't know 
about uh, know about now, right? He said artificial intelligence is uh, is becoming a, a a very crucial technology in our society, right? And it's happening faster than we know. Like a, a, the thing about technology is that it happens all the time, right? And this is why it's important. This is why I talk about in my book, The Strategic Millionaire. And like I said, you can go get it on Amazon, The Strategic Millionaire. Uh, it's it was it was a it's on Amazon. It's available on Amazon right now. You get it shipped the next day. And we talk about trends. We talk about how things form in the marketplace. We talk about these things uh, of how you were able to tell what's coming next. And one of the things in technology, uh, whether it's the internet, whether it's, it's cell phones, whether it's uh, the telephone or whatever, uh, whether it's AI right now, well, you know, what happens is that whenever technology comes to being, right, or the masses realize that this technology is out there, it's, it's what we call a hype cycle. In a hype cycle, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's hyped about it. There's huge investments into the, to the uh, industry. There's a lot of people putting money into it. A lot of people are talking about it. You hear it all on the news or something. And then people in general, human beings, uh, can't keep that hype up for too long. So they move on to something else. I don't care how exciting the new thing is. We can have robots that cure cancer tomorrow. It will be hyped up for six months and six months later, move on to something else. That's how humans work. So then where does the technology go? Let's say we had technology to do something ridiculous, like extend, let's say tomorrow we came out and said, uh, AI figured out a way to extend human life indefinitely. It'd be, we'd cheer about it. We'd be happy. We'd talk about it for months. Then the hype cycle would be over and it would go away. That's how humans are built. So where does the technology go when the hype cycle is over? Well, it's still there. It's still making billions and billions and trillions of dollars. People are still getting rich on it, but the masses have already forgotten about it. It happened with the internet, early 2000s. It happened with the cell phone. It happened with real phones. Is that the masses, and sorry to say it, are driven emotionally. And as long as there's no hype or nothing behind it, they move on to the next shiny object. Leaving the rich, the elite, and the banks, the whole industry to make billions and billions and get even richer. Why they move on to something else. That's why you have to separate your emotions from your rational thoughts. Because if you don't, you'll be caught up in that hype cycle with everybody else. Now, AI one day won't be the shiny new toy anymore. But where will it go? It'll still be making money. Stocks will still go up because of it. There'll still be plays in crypto stocks, whatever, to make money. But the, mad, the average person will have moved on to something else. That's one of the ways that, the, that a good investor can continue to make money on an industry that's not sexy anymore. Is that they keep the eye on the tiger, keep the eye of the tiger, they keep focused, and they continue to make money on these uh, technologies that may all of a sudden not be sexy anymore. So... That's what's going to happen to AI. We're in the hype phase right now, hype cycle. So eventually it's going to go away. But AI, it will always be ways to invest in AI. There will always be new technology. There will always be new innovations. But you got to keep on top and continue to invest. Right? So one of the, there's two companies out there that I think uh, that could benefit from this AI movement uh, that a lot of people don't know about. Right? Uh, and it's one that we've talked about in the past. It's Snowflake. And we've talked about this a few times. Uh, Snowflake is an AI company, uh, and, and it, what it, what it, what, AI, what Snowflake does is it's a it's a provider of uh, of basically cloud services, data, and data processing. But the data processing has to do with processor serve uh, processor centers, which also process big data, which AI needs in order to work. And the way AI works as of now is that we feed it a whole bunch of data. And it makes sense of that data. And then it tries to make predictions of the future based on that data. Right? So that's what I said. If that AI could read a million books, let's say, and then you type in, hey, I want you to give me a sentence about the American Revolution. American Revolution. So all that data that it, it read before, it tries to predict what you wanted to say, and it feeds you a sentence from the American Revolution. And, and the more data it has, the better it is. You see what I'm saying? So... A lot of these, now that the AI, the AI infrastructure is built, and that's what NVIDIA was about, the, the chips, the processes to build the AI infrastructure. The next AI plays will be on software. Software, right? And that's data processing, uh, the software that, that we need to implement these AI uh, 
the business, uh, you know, elements into into businesses like telecommunications, uh, prediction, and all these other things that businesses need, and also the software that drives all of that. That was that's the next big investment in AI. Nvidia and a lot of the hardware companies are starting to level off. Nvidia is still going to a thousand, but it's already at like four or five hundred now. So that means that most of the exponential gains are gone. Still a good idea, still going to make money, but the exponential gains are gone. So the next exponential gain is going to be in places like Snowflake, places like Twilio, which I know Twilio is down, but it's coming back. Just take my word for it. Can't tell you what to buy and sell, but I'm telling you, I still think it's coming back and I still uh, will put my money into it. So another one out there is Roku, right? Roku is another one, uh, but that's an that's a AI stock that a lot of people wouldn't associate with AI. But AI does do targeted uh, ads, uh, which deal with AI, and that their ads are becoming some of the best ads in the industry because they've uh, heavily invested in artificial intelligence even before the chat GPT and all this stuff. Uh, Roku's been invested in AI over the two years, and now is the time for those dividends to pay off. Uh, so Kathy Woods has actually predicted that there could be a 600% uh, increase in Roku shares by 2026. And I tend to agree with that. I think that um, Roku is becoming more less of a, uh, a, a, I guess, a hardware company. That's where they started out. You play these things in the back of TV. Now the TVs come with Roku. So Roku, more or less, is now a software company. Just the same as Microsoft. Instead of your computers coming with Microsoft operating system on it, they come with Roku. Roku runs the TV, runs the smart TV, uh, connects you to the internet, all of that stuff. So Roku is now becoming a software company. Software companies can make a lot more profit because they don't have to deal, they don't have to make one unit for every person. They just make one software and it spreads around. Uh, it just copy, copy, copy. Software companies are some of the most profitable companies on earth because of their ability to make one product and duplicate it mi millions of times if they have to. Now the prices do go up, but it's not a one-to-one -one. Like if I produce a car, I got to have a certain amount of labor each car that comes off the assembly line. With software, it's not like that. The costs go down, the more units go out. Uh, a lot, you know, it's not, you don't have to have the same amount of labor each time. So that's the reason why I think, I think Roku is an excellent investment going forward. And I think like for the next year, next two years, I could see it going to five, six hundred dollars, right? Um, because of their move into being this software company, their use of AI to, uh, to, to feed ads to you. And the thing about ads in the future is that hopefully, I mean, nobody likes ads, right? But when I, this is the thing about it. Now, somebody told me this a long time ago when I was back in my web development days. They said, nobody likes ads until the perfect ad comes to you. Then you like it. And people hate ads. They hate 99% of ads, but there's always this one ad. It comes to you and, you, oh, man, I like that one. Oh, man. Like a Jordan. Like I remember when I was a kid, uh, Jordan ads would come on. You know, Jordan shoes or Gatorade or whatever. We liked those ads. We would stop, oh, come, come run out to watch an ad, right? But, but those are what we call targeted ads. You see? Now, if all the ads that you got were like that, ads would not be invasive anymore. They would be entertainment. So that's what AI is going to provide in the future is that, Ads won't be invasive anymore. They'll be right, they'll, they'll go right into the entertainment, right? They'll be fed, they'll be massaged right into what we're looking at, what we're already watching. We won't even know that they're there. And those are the best ads. Those are the ads that are going to make the most money. Most of the ads in the past have been like a shotgun effect. Put them on TV and maybe some people will like it. But in the future, all ads will be personally, so it would be able to predict what you want at the time you want it and put it right in your face when you need it in the best possible way. Now, those ads are people are going to actually like. Roku is one of the leaders in that right now. Roku is leading the way. Roku has the, the infrastructure, the footprint, everything they need to do to get this done. So I think Roku is still a is going to be a very good stock going forward. So, uh, like I said, join the CNC last day, the last week to get it for $77. I think it's $78. Next week is going to $89. Click the link in the bio. Go to jointhecnc.com or text the word CNC to 89603. Or you can DM me on Instagram, Tall Guy Tycoon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you. Uh, make sure you like the video and have a great night.